If it wasn't for probation, Florida would be in the thick of the national championship hunt. Instead, the Gators will end their season tonight in Tallahassee. Thus, Doak Campbell becomes the site of their postseason bowl game. You know, we have no, well, we'll get them in, in, in January or we'll get them at the end of December. We can't say that, you know, it's, 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 it's not never. And haunting the Gators' closet have been three straight losses to the Seminoles, even though the new regime takes no credit for that. All of us coaches, except for one, uh, Red Anderson, uh, have not been here the last few years. We've been coaching at other places around the country. And we know Florida State's been very good, uh, but they've not been beating us. They've been beating a team called Florida, and hopefully some things are new around here now. This team's different, all right. No longer is it Emmett Smith right, Emmett Smith left. It's now the spurrier pandit mix of wide open football, and it has Florida on the verge of its first 10 victory regular season in history. It also has both teams talking again, but according to the Gators, the Seminoles have been doing most of it. Watching them this year and, and seeing them taunt a lot of players, and uh, you know, I don't want to say any names, but you know they've been showboating a bit and things like that. Just isn't impressive, and it isn't the FSU team that I'd grown up enjoying watching. <laughs> you want names? I want names. You are fired up this morning. <laughs> well, maybe the Seminoles have room to talk. It's an excellent senior class. They've won 40 of 46 games heading into the night's game in Tallahassee. It's the winningest senior class in school history, and it's also a pretty winning program at that. Oh, it's unbelievable, Dan. 50 and 54 of the last 56 weekly polls. This team has been in the top 25. Have four game winning streaks. As if they needed any extra incentive in this rivalry. One side has the war chant going like this, the other side going like this. It's going to be crazy tonight in Doak Campbell. State has won three straight, but the arrival of Steve Spurrier and the revival of the Gators will create a fierce tug-of-war for talent in Florida as State moves into the ACC coming up now. As Steve Cyphers reports, both coaches know the recruiting battles begin on the field. You'll know it's not just another game in Tallahassee when you watch Chief Osceola get off his horse. That happens in only one game. And that game is when Florida plays Florida State. We want to beat them very badly, and they want to beat us very badly. If the world ends tomorrow, I could face my master better if we could win this game. <laughs> Bowden's been plenty prepared to face his master the last three years, with the Seminoles mastering the Gators in each of those games. But this is a new Florida team led by first-year coach Steve Spurrier. Heisman Trophy winner for the Gators, he took a troubled program and injected it with a new attitude, plus a pass-happy offense. With the Gators not on probation, they might be contending for a national championship. We have an opportunity to have the finest record in the history of the University of Florida. Since they've been playing football here uh, in Gainesville, uh, no team's ever won 10 games. It's something that all the Florida people and all the Florida State people have been waiting for. And you can imagine the urgency that the University of Florida has now, the fact that we beat them the last three years. Uh, certainly the players uh, want to break those streaks, but, but really sitting around here and saying, hey, we, they've beaten us three years in a row, we got to get them, that, that's not going to help us win the game. While that game's taking place on the field, the recruiting game will be taking place in the stands. Roughly 150 of the state's best high school players will pass through this gate to watch the Gators and the Seminoles in person. A poor showing here, and a school might lose more than a game. If one team dominated the other one, if, if one team won 38 to 7, something like that, then a, a youngster coming out of high school and has a chance to go to either one may say, oh, gee, that team's a lot better than the other one, so uh, I may want to be on a winner. Marquette Smith wants to be on a winner. A running back for Lake Howell High School near Orlando, He's third on the state's all-time rushing list. He'll be in attendance at Doe Campbell Stadium, but he won't cheer for either team, and he doesn't care who wins. It could be different the next year and the year after that. Um, I want to go into a program and contribute the best I can as a person. I would say two or three boys would make a decision on whoever won that game, but it's not that big. I mean, it's, it's not like 50 guys going to say, oh, I'm going to go to Florida if they win or Florida State if they win. But there'd be several boys that, un under the emotion of it, would choose the university because of that. If winning the big game results in recruiting gain, then the Seminoles, given the results of the past three years, have the edge. But Bowden doesn't claim recruiting victories. He says that in this state where there's so much talent, no state school ever has to accept recruiting defeat. There's so many good players, you can't get them all anyway. If we, if we have the upper hand, we're going to choose our 25. Those, those 25 Florida kids are going to be just, just about as good, you know. Spurrier agrees with Bowden, saying there's enough Florida talent to service both schools plus Miami. But that doesn't stop the coaches from working every recruiting angle to land a prospect. Saturday, that includes winning in Tallahassee.
Spurrier is building a powerhouse if he stays at Florida for a while. Bowden's charisma, that's going to keep Florida State near the top. But when he goes and FSU is in the ACC, you have to wonder if the Seminoles can remain a top five program. Nick, it was a, a game where a lot of bad things happened for us early. <clears throat> uh, Florida State completes a little out and up uh, for about 60-something yards. Second play of the game for a touchdown. We fumble our first play after about a 10-yard run. And uh, all of a sudden, we're behind 10 to nothing. Uh, we did get within a touchdown, I think uh, uh, 10 to 3 and then 17 to 10. But uh, we were always struggling. We are always two touchdowns behind the second half. Uh, but again, uh, I'm extremely proud of this team. Uh, we, we didn't have the greatest year ever in Florida history. We had one of the best, though. Uh, we did finish 6 and 1, number 1 in the Southeastern Conference. And that certainly was a tremendous accomplishment. But uh, you have to give Florida State credit. They played extremely well. Their offense, uh, I didn't think they could move the ball the way they did against us. Uh, they were simply outstanding. Uh, it, was, uh, it was one of those games where uh, the team that scored the most was going to win. And we had our chances. And uh, we're not blaming this loss on the defense. Our defense has been uh, super uh, the entire season. And they're a big reason we've won those nine games. Uh, sometimes when you get into a night like last night where the, the weather was beautiful, about 60 degrees, no wind, and it's, it's tailor-made for, for offense. And we needed to try to win the game 46 to 40. People, I think that's the thing. First, we beat the, we beat the Florida Gators four years in a row. People doubted us. I tried to tell them last night that we was going to do it. We just came out here and proved it. We're the best team in the nation. Gators and Seminoles, none are bigger than last Saturday night's clash. And most will say the 1990 version was the most exciting game of the series. Big play after big play electrified the record crowd at Doak Campbell Stadium. The wind moved Florida State into sixth position in the latest USA Today poll, but its meaning will live on forever. It is the biggest win, you know, of my life probably so far. But it's probably the, one of the biggest wins of my career since I've been playing at FSU, you know. So it was a big game for us, and the seniors, you know, were able to go out 4-0 against Florida, and it's just great. Well, it's a great win because, you know, they say we have beaten in the body this year, and Florida's ranked five in the country. And so it's a, it's a great motivator for us. To the winner go the spoils, and in this case, the state bragging rights and newfound national respect for the Seminoles. The 45-30 win deprived the Gators of their first 10-win season as they endured their fourth straight loss at the hands of their fiercest rival. For Florida State, the key was gaining momentum early, and Coach Bowden went right for the jugular, and the offense executed the play to perfection, a rolled-out pump fake that got the aggressive Gators secondary to bite. They were still leading when Lawrence Dossie crossed the goal line 76 yards later for a 7-0 Florida State lead. I mean, it wasn't going to be the first play of the game. Richard Fain, you know, he's a big playmaker. He went for the big play. Well, we, you know, we hit him. We hit it behind him again this year. When I was, I do Fain, but I was surprised that Will White bit on it also. So when I seen him back, uh, came up real hard, I was just praying, Lord, please don't let me drop this ball. Because <laughs> it was so perf perfectly thrown by Case, and I was able to run, on, run up under and make a big play out of it. For the fourth straight year, the Gators brought in a top five defense, and for the fourth straight year, they were embarrassed. The Seminoles ran up nearly 500 yards of total offense, double the Gator average. Yeah, that fires us up when we hear all these stats, you know, two yards of carry and all this stuff. That, uh, they get some big hogs fired up over there, and they, they showed what they can do. <laughs> offensive line played great. The games that we have won here at Florida State, Miami last year, Auburn here last year, Florida here this year, our offensive line has played a very big role. Last week, the Gators criticized the Seminoles' brash predictions of winning by 14 points, saying they would do their talking on the field. But in the end, it was the Seminoles who spoke loudest. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, Helmet spoke tonight for us. And um, all those words, like I said, that they were saying all week long, they had to eat them. Are you guys as good as anybody in the nation right now? Well, I think we're, we're among.